Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. Now, this has been a clip which I have waited to do for quite some time. Now, if any of you have followed my journey along this very, very bumpy and challenging road of my hernia nightmare, you will know that it's gone on for a very, very long time and it's been a very difficult mountain to climb. But if you don't know and you are new here, then fantastic. And thank you for clicking that button and thank you for sharing this with me. It was a time of my life and is, and thankfully I am coming out of the opposite side now, in a much more stronger, much more healthier, comfortable and being able to enjoy life once more. My life was completely changed by what should have been a simple hernia repair. Mesh in my groin uh, several times caused me a lot of problems. I had a lot of pain. I just, uh, I experienced not just discomfort, pain, but I experienced a sense of almost suffocating in a life which I should have been leading. Um, for nearly very, very close, if not over four years, um, my life was radically changed. Um, and here goes, and that's, 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 let, let me take a moment to say that I am so eternally grateful in my life for the support I've received, not just from my incredible family, not just from my incredible parents, my amazing nan, not just from people who I know, people who I've shared my experience with, but people who actually do not know me and have just asked a question or shared their view or shared their support or their consideration and their care on my channel. And from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely, wholeheartedly thank you for that. I really do. Let me share where my experience all started. My first hernia repair should have been a femoral hernia repair. It all started in June of 2017. And it may have started a little bit before that, but it became quickly apparent that something was very, very wrong in my groin on June 2017. I was on a holiday. Um, and without going into it sort of hugely in depth, because I have captured my whole journey on my channel. Um, and please, if you'd like to know more, I urge you to take a look. It's my hernia nightmare. It's on my channel. And if you have any questions or if you're going through a similar sort of situation, you're feeling like you're in a black hole with it then let me tell you that it does get better. It can take a long time, but it does get better. You just have to persevere with your medical professionals, whether that be your GP, whether that be your surgeon, whether that be somebody who you've just gone to talk to for a general checkup to see how things are going. Be honest and really share your experience. Don't think that you have to be tough. Don't think that you have to never let that wall come tumbling down when you're having a day where you think that it's just not all going right because if it's not nine times out of ten it's because something isn't quite right and that's exactly what was happening with me so in june 2017 i went on holiday with family and i'd done some sort of cycling uh some sort of cycling activity where we were all on a cycling bike and myself and my brother were at the front cycling and it was a lot of pressure and i felt a lot of pressure a bit of a niggly sensation in my groin and Cutting a very long story short, after that day, I had a lump in my groin, very painful, a lot of pressure, a very low down bearing sort of feeling. Later on that day, um, I was running around with my niece and nephew um, around the swimming pool. And as the old saying goes, never run around a swimming pool. And I was saying to the, my niece and nephew, don't run. And what do I do? Running after them, slip over, fall down. Now, the first thing, and I felt out really hard when I got back up, the first thing, because I fell on my hand and my arm, I thought that I broke my hand or my arm or my thumb. And when I got up, it was OK, but my groin really, really wasn't. And something was really, very wrong. So for the rest of that holiday, I had a lot of problems. It kind of gave me when I got back into the UK, it gave me some problems. Um, I, I had it checked out and it was it was very quickly apparent to me that I had a hernia. Um, it caused me problems on and off. Um, and I was waiting to see a specialist. I was very fortunate under my uh, my insurance, which I which I had paid for for a long time. Um, 
that they actually managed to get me in touch with some specialists. But actually, the ultimate specialist, which which started the journey, was through my workplace insurance, being I, I worked in at the time at retail banking at a bank here in the UK. Now, that was absolutely fantastic. It was a prompt service. Um, on the September, where I was feeling a little bit better with things, I went on holiday again. And cutting again a long story short, I came home on the plane and I'd done lots of walking on that holiday. So it was coming through, but it would kind of keep going back up in my groin. And if I rested, it would go away. If I took a moment, it would go away and disappear. Sometimes that pain would be really apparent. Other times it wouldn't be. Um, so I just kind of got on with things. I knew I had a hernia there. I knew I had to be careful so I didn't lift things or anything like that at all. But I knew I could carry on. On the way back on the plane, the pressure and just something completely went wrong. As we were up in the air, I felt something drag down in my groin. Burning sensation, the pain, it was absolutely horrific. Um, and since then, that's when it all went down, spiraling downhill very, very quickly. That was September. I was seen by the specialists. I was seen by the surgeon. I had scans to confirm it, ultrasound scans. I had a quite rare, quite significant femoral hernia. As the time was going on, it was getting worse. It was affecting my leg. It was affecting uh, the nerves in my leg. It was giving me a lot of burning sensation, a lot of pain right down to my foot. And eventually, by the end of the time I had the surgery, I was struggling to get around in and out of a car, walking around. It was very very detrimental to my life and it was very debilitating and when i thought that just a hernia could do this to me it's nothing just about it it was absolutely so debilitating um and in the end i couldn't actually work with it either um in my role it was very demanding up and down stairs and things looking after customers on different floors it just was not possible in the end um i was in a lot of pain i wasn't very well at all and i was very miserable and it was a very bad time of my life. November I had the operation and straight away I felt a benefit from it but what I also gained from that operation is a very prolific overactive bladder and they don't know still to this day why that came about but I had horrendous problems with my bladder feeling like that it, everything was so overactive, um, I needed to go to the bathroom all the time. As soon as I woke up from the operation it felt like such a horrific feeling of needing the bathroom all the time. Um, that urgency, that real horrible, prolific problem, which took over my life very, very quickly. I took a long time to recover. Several days after that surgery, I became really very unwell and very ill. I was vomiting. Um, they thought that I picked something up. I had a really difficult time. And after having, because I had open surgery, because for a candidate to be keyhole surgery, I was told I was far too thin. Um, and with stress and sort of in one thing or another, I do struggle to keep a healthy weight. Um, I really do. I'll be honest, I have them throughout most of my life. Um, the thing which really got me at the time is I noticed a second lump the day I went for the first surgery up above this one. And I thought that it could have been a second hernia. The surgeon at the time didn't pursue that. And on the first surgery, I had some lymph nodes taken away, which were infected, which were giving me a lot of pain and discomfort in my groin and stomach regions at the lower bottom of my sort of stomach area. Um, so that was giving me a lot of problems. So I had the lymph nodes taken away and I had the hernia repaired with mesh. Little did I know that that mesh would prove to cause so many problems as the time went on. Um, my life was very difficult for a long time. It was very slow to recover. It was nearly three months, to be quite honest with you, before I was back on my feet and I was OK. And very quickly, I had the appointments and things through for the bladder specialist. I was on medication to try and control that. I had urgency problems. I had, I'll be honest, bladder problems, weakness problems. As a young man, it was detrimental to my life. It was horrendous, absolutely horrendous. And all through what I thought was this mesh. And I quickly started to question, was something wrong? I went back and seen the original surgeon and the hernia, which I thought was there after having had this one repaired, there was another hernia there. This time it was an inguinal hernia. So I'd had a femoral hernia repaired with a cone mesh, and now I'd been diagnosed with an inguinal hernia. So July of 2018, I went in for another operation and I had a inguinal hernia repair. Again, I was very, very slow to recover. I had lots of pain, lots of discomfort. 
by the time the hernia got worse, I had a lot of problems. Again, history was repeating itself, walking around. The bladder problems grew worse as the hernia got worse. Um, that was 2018. So I was very slow to recover again, and I actually didn't really return back to work for about four months, three to four months, I believe. And then I quickly started to notice a dropping sensation as I was going down the stairs, um, as I was walking, as I would bend, I'd notice like a clunking feeling, almost like a clunk, like a drop in my right groin. All of this is on my right groin, by the way. Following that, into 2019, I had my suspicions that something wasn't quite right. I thought that if I coughed or I sneezed, I could feel that something would move and it would feel like I could feel something knocking and pressing and dropping at times. So I thought naturally, and when sort of if I had to sort of, if you if you bear down, sort of like if you have to, um, like a sneeze or a cough or sort of bathroom, you know what I mean? Um, something would come down. So something wasn't, strong there so something would move so very quickly i thought to myself there surely can't be another one but deep down i thought there was so going into 2019 unfortunately i also had a lot of problems i had a health scare with um, my esophagus with my stomach i had um gastroscopies done i had lots of studies done for my stomach i was very unwell i lost a lot of weight i had a lot of problems and i had a health scare um of having uh, problems with my stomach, my throat, and the very, very scary time of my life, as well as having the problems with my groin. Um, now, going forward with that, uh, halfway through 2019, I had steroid injections, which was fantastic. First of all, for about two weeks, I could stand up because the pain as it got worse throughout 2019 was starting to pull me over and I was starting to walk with a limp again, which I had with my first hernia really, really badly. And I had a job to walk around. The second time I had a job to walk around where it was getting worse when it started to come on the, the second one. Then this third one, I thought, well, something's wrong. I'm very, I'm young. I'm in my early 20s. I'm, I've got this dropping sensation. I've had two operations. I've got all these problems. I was cleared of the problem with my, uh, with my esophagus, my chest, my stomach with the acid. I had um, problems with reflux really, really badly. So all of that was dealt with with medication. Throw in there, I had some spells of vertigo as well, because I suffer with vertigo and hearing problems, as you can see. Um, and my balance is affected quite badly as well. The steroid injections worked for not very long at all. The first one worked amazingly for two weeks. Then I had a couple of months. No, I had a couple of weeks and then it came back with a vengeance. I had the next lot of steroid injections, which worked for days, unfortunately, and then it all came back again. So at this point, there I was being told there was no hernia there, being told that it was scar tissue. It was a small amount of vestibular fat, apparently, which was moving. And I had two hernias repaired and there was, in essence, no way on God's earth that that would happen to you. I seen a lot of consultants, a lot of doctors, and to be quite honest with you, I felt thrown aside. But I kept persevering through the love and the support of my parents and my family. They got me through. My nan, the smile on her face, got me through. The support from my parents got me through. Theoretically holding your hand and being there, facing it with you. If I didn't have them, I don't know where I would have been. I found the strength to continue and to pursue life going forward, but I was struggling with what was going on in my groin. So as it kind of got to about November time in 2019, I knew something had to be done. Something was causing me more problems. Bearing in mind throughout the whole of 2019, my bladder problems were horrific, absolutely horrific. It was getting to the point where I had severe bladder weakness. I was living in a bathroom, to be honest with you. Life was miserable. It was awful. It was being controlled by medication. Some days it would be okay. Sometimes I could control it. Other times I couldn't. I still have problems to this day, but back then I could not go anywhere without knowing where a bathroom was and I would be going literally every hour. It was horrendous. I went and seen the doctor about the problems in 2019 and they felt my scar area because they noticed that I was having a problem walking around in the pain and discomfort, the pressure in my groin. I was sent for a scan and lo and behold in 2019 I was told that I had a recurrent femoral hernia. 
So there I was, being told that I had a third hernia, and this was December 2019. So I suspected this at the end, or the latter part of 2018, but I was left in limbo for a year, thinking that something was happening to me, when I went through the health scare of my stomach, the reflux in my throat, and the bladder problems, all that stress. You can well imagine. That was happening to me, and then December 2019 I was told I had a third hernia. When I told my mum she burst into tears, after what she'd seen what I'd gone through, and going through. Following this, I was told I had to be careful. Very, very quickly, from having to really bear down and push, and sort of really push on my stomach muscles, it seemed to make things worse. And very quickly, from 2019 in December, things grew quite difficult for me. Um, and it started to, once again, for a third time, affect my walking. Um, I started a new job in April of 2019. April of 19, no I didn't, April 2020, sorry. So I, ha I was told in December 2019 that I had the hernia. Um, things progressively got very quickly worse into the new year 2020. April 2020, I had started a new job, which was fantastic. But I remember going to that interview and I remember my first day limping and unfortunately quite hobbling in pain and discomfort. And I was being quite crippled with the discomfort and the pain. My foot was starting to go blue and I was losing a bit of sensation in my leg with problems with nerves, um, pain, pins and needles, discomfort, sleepless nights. I had a few episodes of severe pain with something dropped in my groin and a couple of times I was at A&E. Um, it was absolutely horrendous, bearing in mind I had the bladder problems as well. I had bladder distension surgery done in September 2020 and I was on a waiting list to see a specialist. I seen a vascular specialist, I seen several general surgeons. Nobody would touch me because of the risk of what was happening with the nerves and things which it was squashing in my groin. They started to say that the mesh was prolapsing and the mesh was moving and it wasn't stable and that's why I was in so much pain and that's why I couldn't walk around. For nearly nine months, I started using and walking with crutches. So, of course, it was affecting my back, my hip, my spine, lots of pain, lots of discomfort. And this is where the weight starts to be lifted. I then became to be referred to be a candidate of a top hernia repair centre here in the UK. I had an invitation to go to America for the surgery um, in the, I believe, the Liechtenstein Clinic in LA. Um, I chose not to go there. I could not travel. No way would I have been able to have travelled. I couldn't do 20 minutes in a car, let alone travel. I had the surgery done in March of 2021. Because of the COVID lockdown and everything, what should have happened in 2020 was pushed and pushed and pushed. And eventually I had the surgery in 2021. My pain and discomfort was managed by medications, quite strong sometimes, which made me feel very unwell, so sometimes I couldn't take it. Um, and then again, on and off, I had problems with the bladder. I was fine for a couple of months, for about four months after the bladder distension surgery, I was told it lasted six. I was having problems with that. Um, so it was a very difficult time of my life, very difficult, very low. And then of course, with the appointment after appointment and I was assessed by several different specialists and consultants and surgeons in um, the specialist hospital where I had to travel nearly two hours, which was just horrific, several times. And eventually they gave me a date for surgery, which was the 25th of March, 2021. The day I went in for surgery, I was incredibly nervous. I knew the risks, I knew the complications. Things were very, very close. I was told that there was elements where it may run the risk of being having to be taken away. I had issues with with it being very close to the femoral artery. There was a very high risk of hemorrhage. The risks and complications to the surgery was a list as long as your arm, to be quite honest with you. It was scary. Very often my mum would be in tears. My nan, who's my absolute rock, which I will get onto in just a moment because something tragically has happened throughout this experience, she has Alzheimer's and She's my rock and my world, as well as my mum and my dad. And I would just sit with my nan. And even though she had Alzheimer's, she could still communicate back with me and I would know. Just the look on her face 
I, I knew, I knew what she was thinking, I knew what she was feeling. When I got through this, and I had this surgery, they actually found, and this was what they were proposing to do, because he assessed me and before the surgery and said that the mesh I had in wasn't right for me, it was dislocating, it was affecting nerves, it had moved and migrated up against my femoral artery. And in the surgery, I had my groin absolutely stripped with all the mesh which I had in, so the mesh cone and the mesh plate from the first femoral repair, from the second inguinal repair. They found that I had another large hernia, so after being told I didn't, throughout 2019, throughout the latter part of 2018, questioning myself, and then being told in December 2019, I did have, so can you imagine, for all that time, nearly two years, being told, so 2020 and 2019, that you didn't have one there, and then them finally realising that you did, and then a, a consultant surgeon looking at your groin and saying, actually, this is a mess, I had another big hernia there, and I had all the mesh taken out. I also had some nerves taken out of my leg to help with the pain discomfort. And then I had my whole groin reconstructed and supported, structured with a much more softer, much more easier on the body mesh. So the whole roof of my groin is now mesh and it's now been stabilised. It was a really difficult surgery to get through and it was many, many hours. I remember looking at the clock coming back up and I think it must have been nearly five hours. Um, and it was scary. It was really, really scary. I got through it. I got through it. I had a few complications afterwards. I had to go back into hospital um, in a and &E, and I had developed fluid and gas and I had a hematoma on my scar because I had keyhole surgery to remove the mesh and I had open surgery. So lots of scars, but much better because my first scars and my second scar were horrific and they really gaped in. But this one, I had that all removed. I had my groin reconstructed, nerves taken away, all that mesh replaced to new softer mesh and I was well on my way. I developed complications with uh, fluid retention, lots of swelling, uh, hematoma, but very quickly I could feel that it was starting to feel better. Straight after the surgery, I could stand up straight, which I hadn't been able to do for many, many months, and I was able to put my foot to the ground without any pain or discomfort, just of course the surgery pain. This is where my life turns upside down, and you will know if you are a subscriber to my channel what has happened. But if you don't, my nan is my absolute world, my best friend, a best friend, my mum and dad are my others. <laughs> um, family is everything to me, but my nan is, words fail me, she's everything. She's everything, a blessing from God. And my nan was very well. She was dealing with Alzheimer's incredibly well. And we went from, before I went in the surgery, my mum was planning my nan's birthday party for her 95th birthday. And we lost my nan on the 31st of May. So I had the surgery. I think I made a mistake when I said it, but it was the 25th of May. And my nan took a turn for the worse several days after my surgery. And I'm very, very close to my nan. So even though I couldn't move, I managed to get myself with my mum and my eldest brother down to my nan, who I sat with in the final stages of her life. And I lost my nan on the 31st of May. So as well as having surgery, that went out the window. I was then dealing with my world being ripped apart. And I am still dealing with it. I find it very, very difficult. I don't even know why I said that, still dealing with it. It's horrific on a daily basis. It's horrific. She is like a second mum to me. So, as well as all of this going on with my groin, I was now dealing with the worst thing ever. Alongside my mum, I planned a funeral, and everything was looked after in the way of which my nan would have wanted it to. And it was very, very fitting for her. Very, very heartbreaking, and I'll be honest, I am broken. It's not a day that goes by. I don't wish that she was still here, and if the Lord would have allowed me, I would have held her for my life, throughout my whole life. Coming back to the surgery and my recovery. 
Two weeks after the surgery, I had a call from the surgeon. And bear in mind, I had an experience of very rare hernias, very rare hernias. And the surgeon called me and spoke to me, and he said that there was something he needed to talk to me about. And I said, OK, and he asked me how I was, because I spoke to him several times because of the complications. And after getting that sorted in my local hospital, I was back at home recovering. And because it was such a long trip, I couldn't go back. They wanted me to go back into hospital uh, where I had the surgery done, but I couldn't. So he discussed with me and he said whilst I was having the surgery, he was looking at my groin and why I was having so many problems with recurrent hernias and the condition and state of my groin before the surgery. And he said that he strongly thought that I had Marthen's syndrome, which was a huge shock to me, which is a genetic condition, which could answer why I have bladder problems, which could answer why I'm so uh, double jointed, um, tall, thin, struggle with my weight, hearing problems, recurrent hernias. Apparently, I have lots of symptoms of Marthen syndrome. So I said, but surely potentially I don't have that. He said, no, but I strongly think you do. So there I was thrown into an abyss, to be quite honest with you, of then taking on more of a concern, more of a worry, and starting genetic testing and having heart scans because this condition um, can 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 be associated with heart problems, aortic aneurysms, those type of things. Um, so I've started all of that, and that is ongoing, and that will be separate. Whether or not I will cover that on my channel, I don't know, because I find that very, very difficult to talk about and to deal with. So we'll touch on that briefly. But in terms of that, that is something which I am managing as and when it comes through. For everything else, I'm having problems with the bladder. I've recently been to see my GP again about that, and I'm being referred back to the original surgeon because of COVID. I haven't been able to have that checked on the surgery, the extension surgery, which I had in September of uh, of 2020, September 2020. So I'm, I'm due to have a bladder scan to see how that's going. Potentially that surgery may have to happen again. Who knows? But at the moment I've been put on a medication which I believe is called Mebegron, and that that helps. It helps control things with the urgency. Um, I get worried about the weakness at times, but every day is different. It certainly is, and I'm getting stronger, and I'm feeling well health-wise in myself. I am doing physiotherapy. I have been doing that for a long time at my local hospital. That is going really, really well, very well indeed. Um, my walking is pretty much fine now. It's just I'm now working on the strength in my groin and getting that strength back. Sadly, which is a little bit different, the feeling from my groin down to about midway point in my thigh is numb because of the nerves taken away and that was to try and control the sensation of the pain. So when I started to first start to walk with that, the weakness in my groin um, would make me feel that I would go over on my leg because it was weak at the top. So I've had a few falls. Unfortunately, I went down the stairs and banged my head quite hard through that, but I'm getting there. This is all an experience which I've learned lots from, I've developed lots from, and I'm getting better all the time. So do you know what? My hernia nightmare, I would be happy to say, is over. It's over. It well and truly is over. So after four years, I can now smile. With all my heart, it breaks that I haven't got my nan here to be able to smile with and to hold my hand. And I'm just so thankful to the Lord and to her that she was here for when I had my surgery and for when I come around from the surgery. Because if she wasn't, I don't know what I would do. My mum throughout all of this is my rock and throughout my recovery has been incredible. My parents have, my brothers have, my family have, but my mum it's been truly special and remarkable getting me through this. And as I say, throughout this with my nan and being it's her mum as well, I like to think that I support her as much as I can. And we're extremely, extremely close. My best friend, as as is my nan. But, um, yeah, and my dad's very special. And I've got amazing brothers. And, and it's just, it's been one real rotten, horrible journey, and I'm getting there now. 
I wish with all my heart I would have had by now. I know I always do. She's with me all the time. But do you know what? Turning it back to the surgery, you know, I really do think that it's over. So if you're sat there and you're struggling with your problems, have faith. Pursue every avenue available to you and be determined with your medical professionals, whether that be checkups, whether that be your consultant appointment, whether that be a GP or a surgeon. Be honest. Be truthful to yourself. Never, ever try to cover what you're feeling, because I've done that. And as soon as they think that you're OK or it's not debilitating to your life, they will start to pass the buck on to something else, putting it down to stress or putting it down to everything but what the true element or the true issue is. Some people may be lucky and actually not experience that sort of battle having to get there. I did. I had to battle all the way. And sadly, I paid a lot towards my surgeries, which were private. My first two surgeries were private. And I lost a lot of money with that and a lot of money through medical insurance bills. Thankfully, the last surgery I had was that this amazing blessed thing we have here in the UK of the NHS. You had to be you had to go through a huge different stringent criteria to be a candidate for the surgery. But eventually, in the end, I was and I had the surgery done through NHS. And I'm truly thankful to the surgeon who done it to the Lord up above and to everyone who's given me that support and just truly amazing. So that light at the end of the tunnel has now brought me out into open air and I now see blue skies. I truly do with an angel above my name. So I hope that this has really been something which you can relate to and you have a lot of people have followed my journey throughout my honey nightmare, so I really hope this kind of answers those questions. My health still isn't unfortunately completely finished, where I had a few seizures in, in the start of the year. Um, was thought to be how stressed out I was with the whole situation. I've recently, actually this week, seen a neurologist, so I'm waiting to have a few brainwave scans um, and an MRI scan on my head just to rule out other possible things, but they're thinking that that is down to stress. I mean, let's be honest, with living with a bladder problem at my age, with having all of these appointments, going through all this surgery and losing my nan, it wouldn't be surprised if those things would happen again to me. But going back then with the stress of the surgery and my groin and things, I would quite happily say that, yes, I would agree that would be through stress. I am a naturally stressful person. Everything worries me. But I'm getting better with all of these things. And now I haven't got this and now I can walk with my back straight and not bent over in pain or discomfort. I don't use crutches at all. I haven't done for a long time now. And I can actually smile to the world, even though my heart's breaking inside of my nan. I can smile to the world and I can actually move on and step forward and feel confident and feel that life is there to grasp when I'm ready to after this tragic event of my nan. I really, really hope that you've enjoyed this. I really hope that that update has really meant something to you. It means everything to me. And from my heart to yours, thank you very much indeed for sharing this with me. It truly has meant the world. So for all of my subscribers, for all of the words of kindness and support, I thank you sincerely. And until next time, I will be seeing you then. My very best wishes to you and wishing you good health, both physically and mentally. Take great care. I'll be seeing you real soon. Bye bye now.